high. The versatility of an op amp. All that coming up right after this. Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and we're going to play around with op-amp circuits again today. Well, I've got nothing else better to do, and it's fun. In a previous video, which will be linked in a card up here or down in the description, I was talking about how you could use something like this, a voltage divider, to generate a split rail supply for op-amps. Well, through testing, using the divider on its own to power the op-amps, didn't work out that great and as we can see in this configuration we've got a voltage divider here going into the positive pin of an op amp stage which is what i came to the conclusion in the previous video that that was the correct and tried and true method of doing it however there are other methods of getting a split rail supply using the same op amp stage as a voltage follower and a buffer we can actually get a virtual ground point in the middle here, which will be at half the supply voltage between here and here. Now I haven't shown the supply rails of the op amp itself, that's pretty rudimentary, the negative side goes down to the negative rail and the positive side goes up to the positive rail respectively. And using this buffer now means that we can power a fair few other op amps off of this single stage. Keep the current draw in mind. So as that question states, will it work? Let's find out. So I've got my circuit built now, my test circuit, but before I power it, I want to power it off of that um, computer power supply, which is 19 and a half volt roughly. So I just want to check that I've got the polarity correct before connecting it to said circuit and destroying something. Yep, 19.2 volt and the leads are the correct way around. So I know it's safe to connect this up directly to my test circuit because that's a different adapter that's not used on the computer. It may have reversed its polarity. So it doesn't hurt to check. Okay, so now let me connect up the circuit and my multimeter. Okay, so my multimeter is connected to pin 1 or output of the ANI 532. That's our virtual ground point. And... That's being measured across the actual negative part, so we should see half of 19.2, we'll say 20 volt, should see 10 on the meter when I hook this up. We now have roughly half the supply voltage coming out of the op amp, which is what we expect. So that little circuit does do what it's supposed to do. Now, I didn't have a 10 microfarad capacitor, so I just use a 2.2. I don't think the capacitance really matters. So now, what I want to do is I want to now power another op amp stage off of that circuit and see if it works. Okay, I've got the test op amp stage built now. I've used another integrated circuit, another NE5532 because it's just easier and less messy. It's, yeah, all over the place, but it should still work. I've got that second stage there converted as a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 11 because it's 10k feedback resistor, 1k gain resistor. Now, I'm going to power the circuit on. I've got the multimeter hooked to the output of the second stage, and I want to see if there's any DC content on the output. So let's make sure everything is hooked up right. And now I'll connect the supply. Indeed we do. We do have DC on the output, but that's okay. Now if I just touch the input with my finger and we watch the multimeter, we can see that the DC content is jumping around, so I can tell right away that this is working as an amplifier. So we'll hook it up to a scope and a test source and um, see what we get. Well, it is working, but output is terrible. See that? It's like missing half the negative peaks. Well, actually... Not half the negative peaks, it actually is missing the negative peaks. However, the DC voltage is going up and down when I increase the amplitude of the oscillator. So I know it's working as an amplifier, but just not very well at the moment. This is because I always tend to forget to do one thing, especially with the NE5532, and I should know better. 
I forgot to connect the ground input reference resistor at pin 3. Now if I drop the amplitude, that's better. I was looking at the uh, display before, I'm thinking, that's horrible. And then I thought, oh hang on, I've seen that before. Oh, of course, there's no ground reference resistor. Duh. So as we can see, that's working perfectly. So if I drop the amplitude down, we'll see how far this can go up before clipping. It should go to half the supply rails. Now we're clipping there. And yes, I do know that there's a piece of red crap in front of the display screen there. I have yet to take it apart to get rid of it. It's just crap off of the switches. Now, in this operating mode, as this is operating in bipolar, mind you, we're getting close to the supply rails. We're getting 16.5 volt peak to peak out, which is very significant. So already we can see a difference between the two types of circuits, uh, where they're just using a voltage divider on the input pin of your op amp and then deriving an output and having it just single supply, you only get half the output voltage at the output. With this, we're getting almost close to rail to rail voltage, which is the, the 19.2 volt, which is very nice. So that is two methods of running an op amp off of a single supply. Previous video and this video. So let me conclude. And for completeness, now let's look at my badly drawn AstroCAD. Um, anyway, to recap, we have uh, an NE5532 here as a voltage follower configuration amplifier. Uh, we've got a voltage divider of 210k resistors here going to pin 3 to bias that op amp. A 10 microfarad smoothing capacitor on that input. Pins 4 and 8 are connected to the supply voltage rails, positive and negative respectively. And pin 1 produces our virtual ground. The test circuit is another NE5532 op amp, configured as a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of roughly 11. And pins 8 and 4 go to the negative and positive rails respectively. The gain resistor, the 1K, goes to our virtual ground point. Our uh, input ground point is also at that same point, same as the output's ground point is all at that same point. Just remember, you will see half the supply voltage on the output of pin 1 of this op-amp stage, so if you don't want DC going into the next circuit, make sure to put a blocking capacitor in there. Anyway, that just about wraps it up for this video. And don't... During everything, I just realised I forgot to put the, as usual, the input ground reference resistor uh, on the uh, test circuit. There it is there, a 10k. Just so we've got a little bit of completeness there. And even using that switch mode power supply that usually powers the computer, the output waveform is very stable. So that is also a plus and makes me happy. If this makes you happy, Please remember to go down below, rate, comment and subscribe. And you can always follow me on Facebook and you can become a Patreon supporter for as little as a dollar a month. I'd love some new Patrons, please. Anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya, happy experimenting.